Joining me now is the president of the Conservative Primrose League, Henry Bolton, and journalist and broadcaster, Benjamin Butterworth. Uh, Benjamin, Helen's written in. Helen says, what have you done to Benjamin? He's starting to talk sense and be nice. <laughs> Keep it up, Benjamin. I may have to start listening to you. <laughs> so uh, there's some praise from Helen at home. Now, I'm wondering then, Benjamin, are you about to disappoint Helen? Are, are you happier than a sort of pig in muck now? Well, I think the thing about being a responsible journalist and commentator is that you, you say what you think and, and not what the audience wants. I mean, look, you know, Labour has declared victory. Obviously, the votes aren't all counted, but there's a clear indication. I think in the last sort of hour, West Central, one of the constituent parts of City Hall, has voted for Sadiq Khan, having never elected... Uh, having never had a majority for Labour over the Tories before. The Conservatives have always won. It is a very wealthy part of London. And so that says if those places are shifting towards Labour, then the chances that Susan Hall, the Tory candidate, can overcome that in outer London is nonsense. And I don't think that should really be a surprise because Susan Hall was an absolutely dire choice of candidate. Here is someone who has uh, endorsed Donald Trump, that supported Brexit, uh, that had made uh, liked tweets complimenting Enoch Powell. Now, people can have their views, but the idea that that was going to convince Londoners to vote Conservative over Sadiq Khan was an absolutely ridiculous hypothesis, and you're seeing the consequences of it. So before I bring Henry in then, would you associate with where, yourself with where Streeting's comments, where he said before the election, a win for Susan Hall and the Conservatives is a win for racists, white supremacists and Islamophobes the world over? Well, I think a lot of those people would have liked Susan Hall, yes. Henry, I mean, come on. I, I, I think that's our, uh, it was an outrageous comment to make, and I think it's slightly outrageous for you to, uh, to, to in any way defend it. If that had been the other way around, for uh, you know, somebody on the centre right of politics had said something uh, of equivalent meaning and weight, an insulting weight, uh, about Sadiq Khan, there would have been an absolute outcry, there's a, which illustrates the fact there's a great deal of hypocrisy on the left. Um, I think it, there is no need whatsoever to bandy about words like racist and so on um, when there is actually no grounds for doing so. Somebody expresses an opinion that is not racist, but you don't like it, so you label it negatively because you want to try and gain the ascendancy in an election. That is, is, a, is a person who has no integrity, no honesty, and frankly, is the sort of reason that people switch off to politics. I think it's disgusting. Henry, are you optimistic, before I go back to Benjamin, are you optimistic about London's future? I, I think it's very difficult. <laughs> you, 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 the, London has huge challenges, and when you think about um, the fact that actually the mayor of London, whoever the mayor is, has what, 17 billion uh, budget, um, has huge leverage, huge power, but also is managing a massively complex society um, with all of the, 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 the bits and pieces that go to support that society, policing and roads and everything else, um, it's a ma and transport. <clears throat> It's a massive thing, and I. It, so it's a big super tanker that you've got to turn around. I'm I'm very pessimistic about the future uh, about uh, of London because I think that Sadiq Khan has done absolutely nothing, but it, in many respects has encouraged, but done nothing to stem this fly uh, flood of. A, a flagrant abuse of, of British tradition, British laws even, I've called it cultural displacement. I think London is unrecognisable compared to what it was 20 years ago. He has encouraged that process, he has facilitated that process, and I think that that's only going to go further in, in the next 10 years. All right, I mean, Benjamin, come on, you're... Sadiq Khan's biggest fan, are you not? You must, you must want to come. I wouldn't quite that. say that, to be honest. But um, no, I don't know what you mean by the change in London in the last twenty years. I, are you referring to to demographics? I, uh, partly, yes. Oh, well, I'm talking about demographics, but I'm also talking about cultural stuff. I'm t talking about um, the, the the old markets are going. The 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 the. the the, the entire character of the town has been changed. What about black uh, cab drivers? I mean, you, celebrating Ramadan or Easter, things it, like that. Precisely. And then you get this two-tier policing. I suspect. Now I'm, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll put it out there. I suspect that Sadiq Khan knew perfectly well because he knows London that a lot of his voters would be people who would support 
the Palestinian cause in Gaza, and that is why we've seen two-tier policing. Yeah. And, and he, has, he has benefited from that in this election. All right. I think that is, that is appalling politics, and it's bringing in sectarianism and Islamic politics as well, which carries with it a whole raft of, of serious issues. Now, Sadiq Khan, of course, isn't here to, to defend himself or to verify that claim. Was. But, uh, <laughs> well, that would be a good one. But, Benjamin, I mean, do you, do you accept that London has changed in, in that respect? I mean, the great thing about London is its multiculturalism. It's the fact that the entire world lives in this city. You know, I did my undergraduate uh, at the London School of Economics, which has more nationalities than any university in the world, and they're all exceptionally talented. I think that is a microcosm of what is brilliant about London. You know, bear in mind that there are only two regions of this country that put more tax in than they take out. That's London and the South East. So a lot of people attacking London should know that, you know, a huge amounts of money come into this city which benefit the country. Now, I don't think Sadiq Khan is, is anti-Semitic. I don't think he was endorsing the, the allegation of two-tier policing that was made against him. I think he's met with the Jewish community extensively. I do also think that the Met has been dealing with it badly. But I think to put that s simply at, at Sadiq Khan's door on what has been a very complicated situation, not just in London, but in other parts of the country, is unfair. Uh, but what I would point out is that I still think though Sadiq Khan's going to win, you will see a much closer result than what Labour is polling generally. And I think that should be a warning sign to Sadiq Khan that he's won a historic third term, the first three term mayor of London. But I suspect if the Tories had a better candidate and maybe an incumbent Labour government isn't that popular, you know, things could I get think, tougher. I think, uh, very briefly on that, um, the Greens in some areas have been picking up support. Um, the, I don't know whether it's the case in London yet, it's, it's too early to really tell, but in other parts of the country, the Greens have been gaining support, not on the basis of Green policies or the Green Party's position on anything, except on Gaza. There are people who, uh, candidates who have been shouting out Al-Akbar when they've been elected for the Green Party. Now, th this is, this is Problematic. I was in Leeds. Leeds. Yeah, Leeds. Yeah, in, in um, Leeds. Hare, Hare Hill and right? yeah, Hill yeah, Hill yeah. Hill yeah. Um, But I, I, I think that is massively. We've we've got a big dilemma. Democracy, and this is the, London's pretty much in the lead in this. Democracy means quite rightly, and I would defend it to my dying breath, that we give people the opinion and the the, the choices as to how they're governed and by who. But if in that process. We then elect, or uh, uh, people are elected who fundamentally believe in the political uh, uh, approach or the Islamic approach to, to politics. That means that, that, that because the Quran, the, the Green Party, the Quran, the the Quran believe in well, I'm not talking about the Green Party. I'm talking about their you candidates. You, you I'm talking gave, about their candidates. About the Green Party I'm talking about their candidates. Yeah, not the Green Party. I'm talking about their candidates here. No, and if right. there are people being elected who believe that. The government should be as interpreted from the Quran, not so you're, you're governing on the basis of interpretation of what the Quran's guidance says, rather than uh, governing on the basis of what the people want, govern, uh, government of the people by the people, um, right. you know, then you've got a problem. I, I, see that, I see that sectarianism and that political Islam creeping in quite dramatically in this election. All right. I mean, you can accept, Benjamin, that the, the weekly marches are becoming a bit much, surely. Yeah, I find that a very difficult question because I think the right to protest and protest should be uncomfortable, but clearly it's caused problems for Jewish people going about their day-to-day -day lives, which is totally unacceptable, also costs a fortune. So I think that's been a very difficult one, but I don't think it would have been any easier for a different mayor. Okay, dog. Right, folks, we'll leave it there. Thank you very much to my panel.